Hey, welcome to this edition of Snowmobiler Television. On this week's show, we've got the Yamaha LTX coming at you in first burn, and we also head up to the Halliburton Forest with accelerated technologies to get an inside look at some next level suspension setups. Plus, John gives us a hand dialing in our 900 Ace Turbo. So, you're not gonna wanna miss this, so keep those fingers away from the remote. STV is brought to you by Yamaha. Conquer snow with Yamaha. Ultimex belts. Performance driven, performance proven. Ford F-Series Canada's best selling line of trucks for 53 years. Tough, smart, capable. Accelerated Technologies is a suspension shop not only dedicated to snowmobiles, but any type of power sport vehicle. And it doesn't matter if your machine is used for recreational or racing purposes, these guys can make it better. Accelerated Technologies grassroots level has been pavement racing but I've always been a snowmobile enthusiast. And uh, as the company grew, we started to see the, the, the quiet period in September to December. And I thought, well, let's fill that in with helping out some of our friends and customers with their snowmobile setup. So we started to do that and it was incredibly well received. Uh, every market that we have experience in, whether it's side-by-side, -side, ATV, motorcycle, enduro cross, road racing, snowmobiling, we learn. We learn a little bit about, uh, you know, geometry, about vehicle dynamics, suspension capability, um, compliance, bump absorption, and we can pass that on to the snowmobiler. And it's just been so successful. We've been uh, getting crazy busy. Uh, the last year, our busiest months ever for the company were October, November and December, which was unheard of five years ago. So the typical customer is the regular snowmobiler. We actually very rarely see the hardcore guys. You know, they're going to take some time to win them over and come over and see what we can do for them. There's exceptions, you know, when in, in every demographic we work with, we've, we've, we've helped the slowest guys and put people on the podium. So it's, it's been fun that way. But most of the people are, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 year old guys and girls coming in the shop. Well, we do a baseline setup for the average rider and we get a chance to educate them at that point about how, what we're looking for in terms of the dynamics and the loading of the snowmobile. But, but we ask them. We interview them, we talk to them about what do you want, you know, and, and that's, that gives us kind of the direction on how we set up their machine. And every machine is tailored. It's not cookie cutter, you know, just like people. You very rarely find somebody that's 211 pounds, 5 foot 7 with short arms. You know, all of these things affect where we sit on the snowmobile and how the snowmobile operates. So. The phone almost always rings, you know, the next week and they're like, man, that's the best money I ever spent. And, and it, it works well for both ways because at the time we can educate them about the limitations of their OEM stuff. And quite often they're happy with that. But, but people who are a little bit more demanding, a little bit more specific, have higher expectations, they're going to say, you know, I was thinking about what you said, and, and those ski shocks are bottoming now that we've got the ride height down just a little bit low. Handling's great, but I'm going to look at maybe a set of Elkas for next season. And, and we, we've, been, we've been seeing the, the relationship grow from year to year, and they keep coming back, they keep coming back, and they're always smiling. We come into the shop, and I like to see all the machines lined up. I like them all pointing the same way, you know, just little things that I've that have carried over from running a race team so that when you go to the track it just goes like clockwork you know the tools are where they're supposed to be the, you know there's you're not tripping over extension cords 
So we get a lot of positive comments just on the impression of our shop. They come in in a, a little backwood shop in Buckhorn and they're like, wow, this place is really nice. And, and we're proud of that and we, we strive for that. But we, that, that's part of our work ethic and our work motto is to dot I's and cross T's and make sure stuff is perfect, you know, because we've sent superbike riders out and, and I, you stand on pit row and watch them go by and, and if you're not 100% confident in every nut, bolt and fastener, it'll eat at you, you know, so we try and take that same philosophy with our customers. We strive for perfection and settle on awesome. Halbert and Forrest has opened their arms to us and, and welcomed our testing crew here this week. And we, it's been phenomenal. The trails are amazing. The, uh, the facilities are fantastic. And we joke that it's like having our hotel room right on pit out at a racetrack. And we're not treating it as a racetrack by any means, but we come from a racing background and it is so neat to be able to test right from the door of our cabin. So that's been wonderful. Coming up after the break, the bold new Yamaha LTX is warmed up for first burn. The Yamaha Sidewinder LTX LE survived the cut and made it into the 2019 model year lineup for Yamaha, but this machine is a spring power surge model only, so its availability is a little bit limited. Now, some might think with sleds like the SRX in the lineup, there's really not much point in having the LTX around at all. And you could think that, but you'd be wrong. I would consider the SRX more of a niche sled for the go fast guy that's really not interested in doing much else than going fast, which the SRX does really, really, really well. The LTX on the other hand is still blisteringly fast, but it's a little bit more well-rounded. Not much has changed for 2019 over 2018. For 19, the list starts with shocks that have been upgraded from manually adjustable to electrically adjustable IQS shocks that are triggered from the new stealth controls on the handlebars. And there was one other thing that uh, was new, what was it now? Oh yeah, new graphics, but not any old graphics, because these are bold new graphics. <laughs> After living with a 50th anniversary version of this sled in last year's production of STV, I can honestly tell you that for big trail rides, the Sidewinder provided epic experience on each and every one of them. And this new winder does exactly the same thing, just a bit better because of the bold new graphics. This sled will challenge your skills as a rider and tempt you to push beyond your capabilities if you let it, but it can also be a docile, well-mannered ride when the pace falls off. And although it can easily be a friendly sled to tour the trails with, the monster is just a flip of the thumb away. I can't even begin to tell you enough how enjoyable this sled is to ride. I mean, I constantly find myself smiling, even giggling as this thing is pulling at your arms as you're accelerating out of a corner. And then at night, after you've been hustling for a little while, this thing will start belching flames out the exhaust. I mean, how good is that? And the graphics, I mean, have I mentioned the graphics? Oh, they are bold.
there is a small sacrifice that's really only become apparent since the debut of the SRX, and that's the feel of a bit too much understeer. The SRX's grip is slightly better balanced front and back with its short lug track, where the LTX and its 1.6 inch Campsol Cobra hooks up much better, but it does tend to push the front end around a bit, and the new graphics don't help at all with cornering, but at least they're bold. One commonality shared between the SRX and the LTX is the Fox Intelligent Quick Shift, or IQS shocks. I couldn't think of a better adjustable shock system than last year's manually adjustable units, and now with them being electrically switchable on the fly from the handlebars, Fox has just made them better, just like the graphics. Switching between the three positions can really be felt by any rider to improve their experience, even riders who don't typically geek out on their suspension setups. Shocks with 20 clicks of adjustability I feel are beyond most riders' ability to correctly tune, and if you don't pay attention, they can easily be misadjusted, completely throwing off your ride experience like bad graphics would. The simplicity of the IQS solves these issues, keeping you in the sweet spot for shock tuning. And this badge sure goes well with the new graphics. There's no question that this is a sled at the top of the Snowmo World food chain when it comes to power and its pricing. But from a rider's perspective, I feel a sled of this caliber is missing a few things. For starters, other sleds in this class have toolless adjustable handlebar adjustment and roost guards to protect your hands from wind blast and, well, roost. Then on the display, the available information is helpful, coolant temperature, boost pressures, bold new graphics, things like that. But how about a data logging feature or even more options like air fuel ratios? When you drop the kind of coin it takes to bring this sled home, I think you'd want all the bells and whistles. Chartreuse handguards would look great, I think. Speaking of chartreuse, have you seen the new graphics? They sure are bold. Now, you wouldn't think that Yamaha Blue and chartreuse would be two colors that would go so well together on the snow, but they certainly grow on you. And in case you're wondering, or if you ever forget what you're riding, there are 20 logo reminders that say Sidewinder and 14 turbos embedded in the graphics. The 2019 Yamaha Sidewinder LTX LE is high-end and not for everyone. I know haters are gonna hate, but if you're the type of rider who wants the reliability of Yamaha's engines, along with the power of turbocharging, plus a chassis that holds everything together with style and performance, this could be your machine. Coming up after the break, John's gonna give us a hand dialing in our 900 Ace Renegade. Any time spent setting up the suspension on your sled is time well spent, even if you just got preload adjustment only. There is a ton of potential in here and setting this up correctly will improve your ride experience. Snowmobiler TV brought us that XRS, the new uh, 900 Turbo Renegade. Uh, as, as a challenge. We were going to ride it and throw a setup at it. And, and, and it was wonderful because, man, it was a long way off. You know, we got on that machine and it wasn't just myself. Every rider of every different weight and height got off it and kind of went, ooh, you know, that's, there's some room for improvement on that machine. It's got an aggressive, long track, you know, and right away that's a, that's a challenge. It makes the loading between the front of the skid and the back of the skid so much more important. The XRS has got longer ski shocks. It's a taller machine. Its, its lineage, its heritage has come from the racetrack and there's still some of that in its design. Does the average trail rider want or need that? Want, maybe, need? I don't think so. That, that thing is so perched up and tall and, and tippy as delivered and, and sensitive to throttle inputs and the new uh, intelligent throttle on the 900 Turbo is a, is a great idea, but I, I think there's some more refinement that it can get. It's, it's kind of a little bit lurchy and twitchy in, in some of the modes. Uh, and when we ride on sport mode, it left us with wanting some more. And, but fortunately, the MXZX RS, or that, that package, is, uh, it's got lots of adjustability. So it, we, we had fun and we started to rip into it and started to make some huge improvements right away. The first change we did was evaluate actually where the ski preload was set at, the ski shock preload. And we want that thing kind of in the minimum zone so that the, the A-arms are as flat as they can be with the OEM ski spring package. 
because um, you can only really go to zero preload and then you need to stop there. Uh, so that'll set the nose down. But then you've, you've worsened the fulcrum effect around the center shock. So we rolled the machine up on its side and started winding out center shock preload. It had probably five, six, seven millimeters of preload on it. Yeah, I, I went to zero and then I kept going and wound the collar all the way up the body. The reason for that is I knew I was going to pull the limiter up. And every, on, a, on the arm motion, 129 arm motion, different skid, uh, but very similar relationship. Uh, every hole in the limiter strap is about a 10 millimeter change in shock length. So I can forecast how much preload I wanted to take off the shock body for the upcoming limiter strap hole adjustment. So we went up two holes on the limiter strap, but, but it at least needs another one. It was a significant improvement. Everybody that, that got on the machine immediately, they echoed the same handling issues, but they were going much quicker on it. There's a lot more confidence in the machine and what it was going to do. None of these adjustments cost you anything on a stock sled other than some time. And done right, it'll let you travel further and faster without the feeling of being beat up at the end of the day. If we can't get to where we need to be with the stock spring package, we, we want to offer the customer several stages. You know, that we really want it to fit their budget and their expectations. Uh, so we'll, we'll work on tuning their original sled with all the OEM parts. And then we have spring kits available to get to that next level. Um, but then if that doesn't do it or they really want some, some premium adjustability or some real premium performance, then we'll really highly recommend an ELCA shock package. And then when we get into ELCA, we've got five levels of shocks there. And then the sky's the limit. We can, we can give them a snowmobile that they'll never, they'll never outride. Coming up after the break, John takes suspension setups to the extreme. To help dial in suspensions and test new ideas, you need to look at the process methodically. To accomplish this, John uses not only his own motorcycle racetrack experience, but he's also enlisted the help of other professional race drivers like Mark Wilkins to get the feedback he needs to develop new suspension theories. I've hooked up a few years ago with uh, Mark Wilkins, uh, professional race car driver from Hyundai this year, and uh, just an awesome guy. Uh, a tremendous amount of podium and, and international race championship experience. Um, and, and Mike Ferguson. And they came to me as snowmobiles looking for some suspension support. They couldn't find it anywhere else. Somebody with the similar mindset uh, as, as my racing background to have the, to be on the same page you know and we immediately gelled and they're they're part of our unofficial testing team that we have now we hope to ride you know three four five times a year and every time it's like a full-on race effort showing up somewhere we, you know we got the service trailer we got tooling we got spring rate options we've got a list of items that we're going to knock through and test and evaluate and, and these two guys, uh, Mike and Mark, have been instrumental in helping us really get to the next level. Yeah, so my passion for snowmobiling and my career in professional driving uh, go hand in hand. Uh, you know, I've been snowmobiling since I was a kid. I've been racing since I was a kid. I've been able to, to turn and parlay my uh, passion for motorsport into a career and then I've been lucky enough uh, when winter allows to come out and snowmobile and continue to fine-tune my skill set on the snow uh, when I'm not at the track. So Accelerated Technologies um, and John Sherrard, uh, you know, uh, we kind of fell into that uh, through a, a good friend of mine, Mike Ferguson, uh, who I had the pleasure of, of racing with and working with. Um, we had a great working relationship. He got into snowmobiling. We kind of both dove into snowmobiling at a much deeper level. His focus and commitment to making the snowmobile work as best as it possibly could totally fits in with my mindset about how to set up a race car to make it as fast as possible. So we kind of pieced that together um, and we really jived. Everything we would talk about on the snow, we would both have very similar feedback um, and we would just laugh. We'd do a kilometer or two. What did you think? What changes should we make? 
Um, and then we basically decided at one point that we needed to put better equipment on our snowmobiles, get rid of the stock suspension, throw on some, um, you know, some proper dampers. So we looked at Elka, we looked at John, and John's an expert in, uh, in, in damper tuning and, and had the right product for us. So we show up here, we want to go out on the trail, and right away we want to feel uh, a baseline. So we need to establish a baseline, we need to know what the conditions are, and if they're going to be consistent like they are here at Halliburton Forest right now, um, you know, we can just fine tune that balance and, and focus on, um, you know, okay, it's a hard trail, it's hard packed, so we've got a little more grip today. So how do we manage that and work with that? And what are the tools that are going to allow us to have the platform we need uh, to be able to go through the corner without getting any ski lift? you know, to have that confidence to, uh, to get to throttle. And we feel that right away. So we'll go a kilometer, even half a kilometer. And, uh, you know, most of the time we just, we'll stop. We get off and right away, what did you feel? And, and, and when the, the sled is in the window, you can uh, very quickly kind of come together and say, okay, no, we're feeling the same thing. Uh, that's really the process. We have a saying, no changes, please. And with a big smile on our face, we say that's as good as it's gonna get right now. And then we can go out and ride and we will put in a good run and get a good feel for it. But until we get to that stage as racers, no, we need to stop. We need to make the change. We need to make it better until we're both smiling and say, okay, no, it's pretty darn good right now. And that's, that's how we wanna ride it. Both John and Mark gave me the chance to ride their own personal machines. And I've got to say, when it comes to handling, these things are next level. They are now the new benchmark for me to compare other sleds to when it comes to handling. I can forgive manufacturers for not producing sleds that ride and handle the way that these two sleds did, because it would just cost too much and would be beyond most people's capabilities anyways. But riding these machines, has given me a glimpse of what could be. If suspension setup changes seem a little daunting, just remember, take it one step at a time, and if you have to, record your changes in a notebook so you always know where you came from. I can guarantee through this process, you won't be disappointed. Until next week, ride safe and we'll see you on Snowmobiler Television. STV has been brought to you by CKX. Wear your passion. On Snow Magazine, for snowmobilers, from snowmobilers.